Today's world of technology is completely dominated by machines and their behavior is controlled by the software powering it. Now will these machines behave exactly as we want them to every time and everywhere? The answer to these questions lie in software testing. Hi everyone, this is Shantini from Edureka and today's session is about stress testing using JMeter. So now in our previous sessions we have talked about JMeter and how we can use this tool for performance testing. So in today's session we will see what is stress testing and how we can do it with the help of JMeter. Now before we begin let's have a look at today's agenda. So first we will have a brief introduction to software testing and then we will talk about what is stress testing and then we will have a look at the different types of stress testing. Then we will move on and have a look at the different steps that are involved in performing the stress testing and also the various tools. And finally, I will show you how you can perform stress testing with the help of JMeter. So let's get started. Now the last decade has seen an overwhelming evolution of the software testing industry giving way to greener pastures. Now it is important to ensure an effective performance of software application and software testing is required to ensure that the application runs without any failures. So what is software testing? Basically, it is a process of evaluating the functionality of a software application to find any software bugs. It checks whether the developed software met these specified requirements and identifies any defect in the software in order to produce a quality product. Now it is also stated as the process of verifying and validating a software product. So it basically checks if the software product meets the business and technical requirements and works as per the requirement. Software testing is basically divided into two major parts. The first one is functional testing and the second one is non-functional testing. Now functional testing and non-functional testing are also subdivided into various types of software testing. So in case of functional testing, we have six different types of testing known as the unit testing, integration testing, system testing, the interface testing, regression testing and user acceptance testing. And in case of non-functional testing, we have another five subdivisions such as the documentation testing, installation testing, performance testing, reliability testing and security testing. Now inside the performance testing we have another subdivision. So the performance testing is also divided into another six types known as the load testing, stress testing, endurance testing, spike testing, scalability and finally the volume testing. Now we have already seen in our previous videos what is performance testing and how it is performed with the help of JMeter. We have also seen how we can perform load testing. So now today we will talk about stress testing and how we can perform this testing with the help of JMeter. So what is stress testing? Now stress testing is basically defined as a type of software testing that verifies the stability and reliability of the system. Now this test mainly determines the system on its robustness and error handling under extremely heavy load conditions. It even tests beyond the normal operating point and evaluates how the system works under those extreme conditions. Now stress testing is done to make sure that the system would not crash under crunch situations. So in software engineering stress testing is basically known as the endurance testing. And a most prominent use of stress testing is to determine the limit at which the system or software or hardware breaks. It also checks whether the system demonstrates effective error management under extreme conditions. Now why do we need stress testing? So whenever there is a festival going on or any online sale going on, an online shopping site may witness a spike in traffic or when a blog is mentioned in a leading newspaper, it experiences a sudden surge in traffic. Now it is imperative to perform stress testing to accommodate such abnormal traffic spikes. Now failure to accommodate the sudden traffic may result in loss of revenue and repute. So we need stress testing in order to check if the system is working fine under abnormal conditions. Also to display appropriate error message when the system is under stress. 
Now it is better to be prepared for extreme conditions by executing the stress testing. Now let's have a look at the different types of stress testing. So first we have the distributed stress testing. Now in distributed client server systems, testing is basically done across all clients from the server. And the role of stress server is to distribute a set of stress tests to all stress clients and track on the status of the client. Now after the client contacts the server, the server adds the name of the client and starts sending data for testing. Now the large server farms need a more efficient method for determining which computers have had stress failures that need to be investigated. Moving on next up we have the application stress testing. So this testing concentrates on finding defects related to data locking and blocking network issues and performance bottlenecks in an application. Then we have the transactional stress testing. Now it does the stress testing on one or more transactions between two or more applications. It is basically used for fine tuning and optimizing the system. And then we have systematic stress testing. Now this is integrated stress testing which can be tested across multiple systems running on the same server. It is also used to find defects where one application data blocks another application. And finally, we have the exploratory stress testing. Now, this is one of the types of stress testing which is used to test the system with unusual parameters or conditions that are unlikely to occur in a real scenario. It is used to find defects in unexpected scenarios like a large number of users logged at the same time or if a virus scanner started in all machines simultaneously or if the database has gone offline when it is accessed from a website. So these were some of the types of stress testing. Now let's have a look at the different steps involved in performing stress testing. So stress testing can be done in five major steps. The first one is planning the stress test. So here you basically gather the system data, analyze the system and define your stress test goals. And then we have the create automation scripts. Now in this phase you can create the stress testing automation scripts, generate the test data for the stress scenarios. Next up is the script execution. Now in this particular stage you run the stress testing automation scripts and store the stress results. The fourth step is the result analysis. Now in this particular stage you analyze the stress test results and identify the bottlenecks. And finally we have the tweaking and optimization. Now in this stage you fine tune the system, change the configurations, optimize the code and meet the desired benchmark. Now finally you again run this entire cycle to determine that the tweaks have produced the desired results. For example, it's not unusual to have three to four cycles of the stress testing process to achieve the performance goals. Now these were the main steps that are required in order to perform stress testing. So let's move on and have a look at the different tools that we use for stress testing. Now here we will talk about some of the major tools that are commonly used whenever we need to perform stress testing on any website. Now web testing is basically the methodology based on regular and complementary tests depending on performance objectives validation. So these testing tools will ensure your application performance in peak traffic and under extreme stress conditions. First we have the Apache JMeter. Now JMeter is basically an open source testing tool. So it is a pure Java application for stress and performance testing. Now JMeter is intended to cover types of tests like load testing, functional testing, stress testing, etc. It also needs a JDK 5 or higher to function. Now you can also go back to our channel and have a look at the different videos on Apache JMeter. You can have a look at the Apache JMeter tutorial and also how to install JMeter. Also you can have a look at the video on load testing using JMeter. Next up we have Load Runner. So Load Runner from HP is basically a widely used load testing tool. Now load test results shaped by Load Runner are considered as a benchmark. It is also quite efficient when it comes to stress testing. And then we have the NeoLoad. Now this is a popular tool available in the market to test the web and mobile applications. Now this tool can simulate thousands of users in order to evaluate the application performance under load and analyze the response times. 
It also supports cloud integrated performance, load and stress testing. It is easy to use, cost effective and provides good scalability. Now stress testing's objective is to check the system under extreme conditions. It monitors system resources such as memory, processor, network, etc. and checks the ability of the system to recover back to normal status. It checks whether the system displays appropriate error messages while under stress. So let's have a look at how stress testing can be performed with the help of JMeter. So in my previous videos, I have already shown on how to create a test plan in Apache JMeter. Also, if you want to know how to install this particular tool in your system, you can go back and have a look at the video on how to install Apache JMeter. Now this is the user interface of JMeter. Now here we will create a test plan and perform our stress testing on a particular website. So for that we first have to create a test plan. So let me just name this test plan as Edureka. Now inside this test plan I'm going to add my thread groups. So let's take the number of threads as 5 and also let's have our loop count as 2. Now inside our thread group we are going to add the HTTP request. So we go to add then we go to sampler and inside sampler we have the option as HTTP request. Now inside HTTP request we provide our server name or the IP address and also specify the path to our website. So here we will take the example of our Edureka website itself. So this is the Edureka official website. I'm just going to copy this server name and use it in my test plan. So here in space of server name or IP, I'm going to put www.edureka.co and I'm just going to specify the path with a slash. Now for this particular website, we would want to add a listener and see how our results are viewed. So once we go to add and go to listener, we have various options. So we can select view results and table where we will get our results in the form of a table. Now before running the test, we have to save it. So I'll just first save this test plan. So let me just name it as stress test and then it has the extension as .jmx and let me just save this test plan. Now once it is saved, now we can run this test and see the result. So now once I've run this test, you can see that it's viewing the result in this table and you can also see all our thread groups and the number of loops that I have given. So you can see that the status is green means the website is working fine and all the thread groups have been working well and it has shown the status as OK. Now if you want to check any particular element inside your website, you have to add a response assertion. So in the thread group, we are going to add one response assertion. So here I go to add and inside assertions, I have response assertion. Now a response assertion in JMeter is most important element as it helps you to assert the response of request in your software load test plan. Now it will show the request result failed if response of request is not as expected and show pass if response of request is as expected. So you can verify your software load test result using the response assertion. So here we have added the response assertion inside our thread group. So we are going to check for the response code and we will have the pattern matching rules as contains. And here I'll add the response rate. So I'll put 200 because 200 is used for the success response. Now the response code 200 represents the HTTP request which has succeeded already. So we will add this in our patterns to test and we will save it. So now once we run this again, you can see that the status would be viewed in the table again. So you can see that the assertion is taking place and now we can go to our view results and table and see that more number of samples have been added here and you can see the status is still green. But now if we go back to our response assertion and in case we change this number to 201 and again save it and now if we run this again, let's see what happens. So you can see that the test is taking place. So you can see that it is complete and once we go back, you can see that the status has changed to red now. So you can see that it means our HTTP request did not succeed because we put our response assertion code as 201. So now let me just change it back to 200 and save it because that's the code used for the request to succeed.
Now if you want to add more pages, you can just go back to your thread group and add another HTTP request. So here I can again put my website as www.edureka.co and if I want to access any other link inside this particular website. So suppose I want to get inside the cloud computing page of edureka.co. I just have to copy this path and paste it inside the path section of my HTTP request. I can save it as page one and also add another view results and table or in the tree format. So I'll go to listener. So let's view this result in the form of a tree. So let me just save this test plan and run this code again. So now you can see that your test is taking place and the number of threads and users that you have provided are going on. Now in the tree format once you go and click inside this page one you can see your thread group and you can also see your response code and response message. So your response code is 200 which means your website is working fine. Also you've got the response message is okay. So you can also change the number of threads and the loop counts and check if your website is working fine. And this way you will get to know no matter how much stress you put on your website or the number of threads you keep on adding if it is working completely fine or not. So the response code 200 will tell you if your website is working fine or if it has succeeded the test or not. And also when you view this result you go to any of these page and you can check your response code and response message and also check the status of your website or any element that is present in your website. So in this way I can add as many elements as I want to and also increase the number of threads and also the number of loop counts. This will increase the stress and also you can check the time that it takes for the test to happen. You can check the load time here and also the connect time latency and everything is visible here. So you can check if your website is able to handle the stress and no matter how much load you put on it if it's working fine or not. So this was a type of performance testing that you can perform on any website to check if it's working fine and you can also check for the different elements present inside your website and check their performance. So this was all about the stress testing using JMeter. I hope you understood what is stress testing and how it works and how you can use the JMeter tool for performing the same. Now if you have any queries regarding this you can put your comments in the comment section below and let us know we will get back to you as soon as possible. Also don't forget to like share and subscribe our channel for more such videos. Till then thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!